It seems like the new thing on the internet is how to make these glowing crystals out of glue sticks and a tea light. But I'm going to show you how to make them out of a one inch miniature base and a diode. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week we're going to jump into a much simpler build than last week's epic coliseum. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up above to that. Make sure to check that out at the end of this video. This week though, we're gonna work on this one inch scatter terrain of LED crystals made out of a one inch base, glue sticks, and a battery. And I came up with a really cool way to keep that battery in that base. Now you might've seen other videos where people have made these out of tea lights or a big push button light for larger set pieces, but I really want to shrink this down to a one inch scatter terrain piece. So. Let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so you know you're in for an exciting video when we start out making fire. What we're doing here is heating up this pin and we're going to melt a small little hole on each side of this one inch uh, reaper base. Now make sure you got some good ventilation. You're gonna create a little bit of uh, smoke when you're doing this. Now these diodes are multicolors, and just follow along in the video as to how I um, spread these leads apart to fit into the base. Again, it's multicolored diodes. You can find a link to all these diodes, the tools, everything I use in the description below for all of the Amazon links if you want to pick any of those items up. basically just fold these over and you want to have about an eighth of an inch on that second lead um, higher than the other one to allow for the battery to slip in between the two and that's pretty much all you need to worry about for the electrical super simple easy and uh, you know pretty fun to make now cutting these glue sticks we're gonna save the large chunks like that first piece we just cut off because we're going to use them later on as smaller crystals in this build. This is a larger glue stick. There's a, a small size and a larger size. Um, the larger size, I guess, is more of your standard glue stick. And we're gonna make three crystals per glue stick. So as you can see, this is maybe three quarters of an inch tall. And I like to try and vary the sizes of all three crystals just by a little bit. So now this one's about an inch. And then whatever I have left over is what I'll make the third crystal out of. And using a sharp blade here um, will help you get nice crisp edges. This was a little bit of an older blade. but All right, so the trick to making the clear crystal, dipping it in hot water. Look at that. I have used uh, a lighter. To get this effect, um, when you dip it in hot water or bring a lighter to the glue stick, it clears it up and makes it look more like a crystal. Uh, the lighter is nice, uh, but that will you know, melt some of your finer edges on the crystal. Uh, the hot water, I bring it almost to a boil and then uh, you can see the effect that you get out of it. Now all I'm doing is lining up some different angles for the crystals. We don't want them sticking straight out. So I cut the bottoms at an angle, just using the side of the hot glue gun here to heat up one of the crystals. And now I can slide the other one right into place. Very important, do this on some parchment paper. I mean, I guess you can do it on you know, your cutting mat, but um, hold it flat like I'm doing right now. That way you're sure to have the crystals sit flat on your base when you go to add them. Now when you put this third crystal on, I like to make sure I'm melting into the first two. That way you get a good seal and uh, connection on all three. Okay, so my little secret to getting this battery staying um, in place, melt a little hole inside of one of the crystals and then we press flush into it one of the magnets that you've seen me use in quite a few of my videos.
Then in the center, we're going to heat up uh, another little hole, add a little bit of glue around the base of the glue sticks, and then place that right on top of the diode. Now I like to line that magnet up with the uh, leads underneath the base. That way it pulls the battery up onto the lead. And here, as you can see, I'm just adding a few of these smaller pieces of the glue stick to use up as much of it as we can. Now, this stuff right here, it's a Crayola product that I used. I'll have, again, there'll be a link to it in the description below. It worked pretty well. This stuff does tend to crack once it dries a little bit, but the way I'm putting these together, you're never going to see those cracks, so it doesn't really matter. But you could use DOS clay here if you wanted to as well. Now these are just some clay sculpting tools that I'm using to just form the base and get the clay pushed into and around all of the crystals. And just get this to a rough shape that you want it because as you're going to see here in a minute, we're really going to form it up and add some more uh, effect to it here. Now I added the battery underneath the crystal while I'm doing this portion because it's going to lift the entire base up because the magnet, uh, not the magnet, the uh, battery sticks out below the base just a little bit, which is nice though because now we can add the clay and it will cover it up um, and still sit flush on the table. These are some crafting rocks that I got at a local hobby store. Look like little gold nuggets, but we're going to make these look like little crystals that haven't quite yet broken out of their shell. So we're going to give them a little effect of uh, red or purple or green, depending on the crystal um, diode colors that we use for the crystals. And all you have to do is just press these right into place. We're going to add a little bit of uh, PVA glue here in just a minute which will also help to hold them in place. And if you can get this sand on here while obviously the clay is still soft, you can just press it right into place. And in about a day, once this hardens, you can take a little bit of PVA glue mixed with some water. And I like to use a Q-tip just to kind of dab it in place all around the base here. And a cool little tip, I like to use um, a dehumidifier when I'm working on these projects. When I'm trying to get something, some paint to dry, uh, a glue wash, uh, anything like that, put it in front of a dehumidifier. It works really well. Now you can do anything obviously that you want for your base colors. I wanted these to look like they were in more of like a, an earthy environment and we're going to put some grass on these as well. But they could still be used for crystals in a cave because these are emitting light and potentially you can use the argument that that light is what's, you know, helping the, the grass grow, so to speak. So we get our base color of the brown. Now we're going to do a base gray on these individual stones. Now we'll do a light dry brush with this country twill. And a lot of this we're gonna cover up. We're gonna use some Vallejo thick mud on this, again, as well as some static grass. Now you wanna make sure to get a good dry brush on the edges of these stones because we're going to highlight these, again, in the color of the diode for the crystals on the inside. Even though they're not, a, you know, formally a, uh, a crystal yet, right? We're gonna still add some color to them uh, to make it look like it's still part of this growth. So this is obviously a purple diode in here. I'm doing a light dry brush now of purple over the stones, as well as a little bit of purple on the muddy base. Not really an OSL effect, but just to give a little bit of a glow effect to it. And again, we're going to cover a lot of this up with some thick mud and grass, so uh, you don't have to get too crazy. And the nice thing about coloring these stones is that you can still see what color diode um, these crystals are going to turn out to be uh, with them being off. So if you want to use these crystals 
as a puzzle in uh, in one of your you know adventures where they have to find or turn these on um, in a certain way. You know, it's just a kind of a cool way of uh, of keeping track. And that was just a little bit of brown wash, Agrax Earthshade. Then we dip into my thick mud here by Vallejo. And as you can see, you know, we've got some paint lines where the paint meets the crystal. And don't worry about that. Don't worry about getting an exactly perfect paint job because we're going to use this thick mud to go up against the crystal, again, as well as the grass. And these are going to look spectacular when we're done, like really good. As you can see uh, to the right of my thumb there, there's a little crack from the clay. We'll fill that right in with some of this thick mud and you'll never see it. And I always keep a set of paint brushes around, older ones like this here that I use for, you know, thick mud or a stone effect. That way I don't worry about ruining any good brushes. Now in between um, where the thick mud is, I'm placing just some straight PVA glue and we're going to add our static grass. So as you can see the base brown with that dry brush, there's only a very little bit that's going to be showing if any. And we do all of that just to ensure that if we miss a spot of thick mud or grass, that's still going to kind of look good and flow together. Now here we're going to mix up some different colors of static grass, some lighter green and dark green, and just place it kind of sporadically around the entire base. And this really does stick well. You don't need a static grass applicator for this. And just work over some parchment paper and you know as you're working through these you're going to start getting a blend of these two separate grasses too on the uh, parchment paper. Just scoop those up and uh, you know place them right back on and you won't really have much waste at all. What I don't like to do is place any of this grass back in either one of those containers because then you're pretty much kind of you know contaminating or mixing the colors up. So, if you have anxiety about working with diodes in your crafts, I hope this video, along with the other diode videos I have here on the channel, have helped ease that a little bit. It really is a fun part of our hobby. Now, this video has helped me solve a problem to a suggested video that I got not too long ago. So, if you enjoy seeing these videos with diodes, make sure to leave a comment below and subscribe so you don't miss out. That video is going to come out in the somewhat near future. Also, please consider liking and head on over to Patreon, check out the tiers I have there. It's support on Patreon that really helps fund and support this channel and helps it evolve and grow. So until next time, I'll see you around.